Why did you come and volunteer today for the Greens? Um, windy and windy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I, had, I had to throw that in. <laughs> I, um, well, I'm volunteering for the Greens today because, well, really, I can put it very simply that I support Greens policies, uh, particularly on the environment with coal seam gas, with the West Connects. With, we should be stopping the West Connects, not coming up with half baked solutions that will make traffic worse. We need more public transport, and I feel very strongly about both asylum seekers. I've been completely appalled by Labor and also of course uh, freedom for the internet, uh, um, anti-excessive surveillance such as the metadata. I can tell you all about a lot of issues why I'm supporting the Greens. Oh, can you tell us the meaning of metadata? <laughs> okay, there's two campaigns we're going to ask for, Jenny's campaign. Okay, so do you know if you registered for one or the other? I'm running my own campaign on the north oh, side. Oh, sorry. I'm I just, sorry came, I just came then. to help. One of the most important things I think to me about being part of the Greens is actually the fact that when we go out door knocking and when we go out chatting to people and when we actually engage in conversations with people on the street, we're doing it of course because there's an election in 30 days time, but we're not doing it for that sole purpose alone. I would love to be able to sit next to Jamie Parker in Macquarie Street in Parliament and second his motions and do what he needs to do to be able to continue the work that he's been doing in Balmain. And Jamie knows that actually the strength of those voices in Parliament only happens if we have strong communities on our streets, in our neighbourhoods, and people that are active supporting the Greens' vision and the Greens' mission for how we want to see politics improved in New South Wales. And that's why we're doing it. We made history in 2011, and are we going to do it again? And are we going to do it again? We sure are. We are going to show uh, this state that the Greens are powerful, we're strong and we're here to stay. This government needs to go, but we can't rely on Labor to save us. I've sat in that parliament for four years and seen the votes of Labor on so many examples. I'll just give you one, Barangaroo. James Packer came along and unsolicited bid down at Barangaroo and said, I want to build a mega casino down there and I want a license to do that. The last thing we need is more casinos. We probably need a bit more childcare rather than casinos. But what happened? What happened in that situation? Packer employed the two former general secretaries of the Labor Party, lobbied Labor, and it was only me and Alex Greenwich who stood up and said no. We were the only ones that voted against that. And Labor wasn't in government. They were in opposition. They should be fighting, and they don't. And what we saw in that situation writ large is the influence peddling that takes place, the powerful elites that really drive both of those major parties. We need to be strong, why we need to keep our work going so we can lead the way when it comes to openness, accountability, standing up for social justice and promoting ecological sustainability. Thank you. I want to give you a huge laugh for a huge shout out. Adam Bennett, absolutely fantastic member for Melbourne who's been standing up strong and proud on the issue of refugees, on the economy of our state, making sure that we're really focused on the things that matter. He's come all the way from Melbourne. Give him a huge shout out. Thank you to Adam. Welcome, Adam. You're here as supporters, as volunteers, as people who aren't going to be elected, but you're doing it because you care. And you're doing it because you want to reconnect with people and reconnect people with politics in an era where so many people are becoming so disconnected. And they become disconnected in many ways for pretty good reasons. Um, people have every right to be cynical of most of the politicians that they see, uh, but they have every right to feel that, especially in seats like this in the inner city, that they've just been taken for granted, been taken for granted for so many years by a Labor Party that thinks it can move as far to the right as it wants and it doesn't matter, people will have no choice, they're going to have to vote for them because Labor's always minimally better than the Liberals. And that has seen the kind of corruption flourish here in New South Wales that you all know far too well. 
And it's seen the kind of hypocrisy that uh, sees oppositions who once when they were in government led the push for privatisation, now all of a sudden find a bit of spine that will only last for the next month and say that they're going to oppose it. And people have also become disconnected because politics has become a monologue, not a dialogue. And people, especially here in the inner city, who are smart, who want to engage, who want to grapple with the big issues that are facing us, like global warming and like the growing gap between rich and poor, are just being fed three-word slogans. And the problem is that now, more than ever, with those threats that are facing us, we need people to reconnect with politics. The scientists are calling this the critical decade and saying that unless we get global warming under control now, which means, which means this has to be the decade in the whole of human history where pollution is at its highest and comes down from here, from here and rapidly so that Australia becomes a zero pollution society by the middle of the century. They're saying that unless we do that, then we run a very, very real risk of runaway global warming where we just won't be able to control the consequences. And we also need people to reconnect at the moment because this push to lock up everything that moves and privatise everything that doesn't is now getting to the point where the size of the public pie is shrinking and people are being asked to compete with each other for a diminishing slice of that public pie and to pit neighbour against neighbour and resident against resident. And when that happens, when people are forced to be consumers rather than cooperate with each other, people get even more disconnected with politics, but we need that reconnection. And fortunately, fortunately, the Greens are here to be the party of the times and to reconnect people with politics and to be a real alternative to the neoliberal agenda and to the push to privatise everything and sell everything off and make people pay their own way and throw people to the wolves. And the best bit about that is that you are in the best position to deliver that message. You are in the best position to deliver that message because when Jamie or Jenny or I go and do it, people hear us as politicians or as candidates. But when you turn up, the doors today and have a conversation with people. People will be shocked to realise that there's a volunteer there who's not trying to sell them something or who isn't asking for their bank account details. But they'll be even more shocked when you are there and say, can you, I'm here as a volunteer for Jenny or for Jamie and I want to know what matters to you. And most people are going to be taken aback by that because they've never had a political party say to them, tell us what matters to you. They've always been told what's important to them. And when you turn up and say, I'm here because I care about global warming, or I'm here because I care about privatisation, or I'm here because I care about animals, and I want to know what matters to you, that will be 90% of the job done. And you will have been able to deliver a message and have a conversation in a way that none of us can. And if all that happens today is that you have that conversation with someone, you will have gone away doing a number of things. You will have shown to them that politics is once again local and about the community, because you are a person like them who cares. And you will have told them something that they haven't heard for a very, very long time, and that is that their vote is powerful. Because instead of now being taken for granted, they will realise that they sit in some of the most powerful seats in the whole of New South Wales, where they can do something that pretty much no one else can, and that is put a Greens in Parliament who is going to represent them. And that is an incredibly exciting thing to feel if you are a voter. Now, who here is doing this for the first time? Fantastic. Huge round of applause. Well, let me tell you, you will change someone's mind today, or even if you don't change it today, you might be the only conversation that that person has with a real person, rather than a billboard that they've seen, rather than an ad that they've seen going past on the side of a bus, you might be the only conversation that they have. So that when they stand in the polling booth, they remember, oh yeah, that's right, 
the Greens person, Jenny Leong, Jamie Parker. I remember someone came and had a nice chat with me, that nice person from the Greens. I was surprised to realise they only had one head. I'd never met a Greens before. That was good, I'm going to vote for them. And even if that's all that you do today, that is 90% of the job. And let me in, let you in on a tip, or two tips. One is, if in doubt, if you find yourself stumbling, just ask a question. Well, what's important to you? What, what are you worried about this election? What do you think about the way the government's going? What do you think about the opposition? What do you know about the Greens? Have you thought about voting Greens? Second is, if you even stumble on that, there's one get out of jail free card that you've got. Even the ones who aren't doing this for the first time, you've got a get out of jail free card. If you just say, oh look, I'm sorry, this is my first day, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> there's not a person in Australia who won't feel sorry for you. <laughs> even if it's not your first day, they won't know. <laughs> so just remember, if you come away having had a conversation, you will have made a huge difference. And I'm here to tell you, as living, breathing proof, that it works. Leading up to election day, every betting agency, every pundit said the Greens are going to lose because they can't win in their own right and they can't win without preferences. Well, what they didn't know is that the weekend before polling day, we had 584 volunteers out in one electorate, knocking on 10,000 doors in one weekend alone, one sixth of the doors in the electorate in one weekend alone. Ooh. And by the end of the campaign, we had made 46,000 phone calls and we'd knocked on 26,000 doors. And when they said we're not going to win, we not only beat our 4% target which we were going for, we've ended up with a margin in Melbourne of 5.3% with the Liberals preferencing against us. I've done it, and I hope that in a very short period of time, Jamie and Jenny are going to do it as well, because let me tell you something else. Having to run around to try and get Bob Catter to second your motions is a pain in the ass. <laughs> and so to have two there, to have two people in Parliament, in the House where government is formed, will make a huge difference. Because not only will they be able to support each other and not have to turn to Clive Palmer for support. Not only will they be able to support each other, but if it's not this election, then it's only going to be one or two elections time before they find themselves in balance of power in the state parliament and able to say, well, we might support you, but only if you scrap the tollway once and for all and build public transport instead. Only if you scrap privatisation and put more money into childcare. And only if you stop the attack on TAFE and instead put more money back into public education. And that's what's at stake today. So, no pressure, but it's all up to you. <laughs> right? Take this picture now. I might just take one, excuse me. <laughs> you take this picture now and tweet it. Tweet it, Greens 2015, Greens New South Wales. It will be proof that you were there on the day that we made history, that we begun the campaign to make history. You can also pull it out and use it in the darker moments today or over the next month because I want to deliver a slight bit of bad news to you and that is that this thing only works if we do it at scale. You're going to go out today and find a lot of people aren't at home. It's a beautiful day. They're going to be out like any sane person would be. You're going to find a lot of people not at home. You're going to be making lots of phone calls and no one will answer. And as a rough rule of thumb, for every 10 doors that you knock on, one or two might be home, and then one or two of those might be open to changing their vote. So you're going to have to keep on doing it and keep on doing it and keep on doing it. But you've got a month, and I reckon that you can beat our record in Melbourne of knocking on those 10,000 doors in a weekend. I reckon if you keep going like this and build it up over the next few weeks, you are going to put us to shame. So I want to finish by giving you a small, uh, a small wager or a small bet. Um, I think that Jamie or Jenny or I should have to get up in wh whoever knocks on the most doors during the campaign and whoever ends up with the biggest majority out of the three of us 
should be forced to get up in Parliament and wear a T-shirt of the other Member of Parliament's choice, displaying a message of the other Member of Parliament's choice. Now, you might want to have a bit of a think about what embarrassing meme that might be. I've come up with a couple for them already. I'm going to keep them secret. But I really, really hope, I really, really hope that you are all collectively able to force me to stand up in the House of Representatives and embarrass myself because Jamie and Jenny have ended up with a bigger margin than I have. Because oh. nothing, nothing will make me feel prouder than knowing that here, in this sea of green today, was the beginning of a campaign to make history and that we were all part of it. So I can't wait to go out door knocking with you today and I can't wait to be humiliated in the House of Representatives. Thank you. <laughs> My resources for other people's campaign is limited. Thank you very much.